Hello listeners, this video is on an American tragedy written by Theodore Dreiser. Theodore Herman Albert Dreiser, he was born in the year 1871 and died in the year 1945. He was an American novelist and journalist of the Naturalist School. Naturalist is a literary movement which began in late 19th century, which is similar to literary realism that rejects romanticism, but it embraces determinism, detachment, scientific objectivism, and social commentary. His best novels include Sister Carrie and American Tragedy. Let us see an overview of the novel An American Tragedy, which he wrote in the year 1925. Theodore began to write this novel in the summer of 1920. Theodore documents this novel by a base story, which was the story of the murder of Grace Brown, which happened in 1906. Grace Brown was murdered by her lover named Chester Gillett. The story of the couple is that they both love each other. Brown becomes pregnant and thereby demands Chester Gillett to marry her. Gillett, he takes her to a tour to Big Moose Lake, New York. He pushed her inside the lake and by droning, Brown dies. Having taken a break in between the script of this novel, Theodore, by 1925, he completed the novel. The novel is in the genre of crime fiction tragedy. The publisher of this novel is Boney and Liverwright. The publishing date is 1925, December 17. Let us now see the characters of this novel. Clyde Griffiths. He is the weak but a rebellious central character who aspires for wealth, luxury and beauty. In the end part of the novel, he is electrocuted for murder. Electrocuted meaning is to kill somebody with electricity that goes through the body. Elvira Griffiths, who is Chide's mother, she is an evangelist who tries to save her son from the electric chair when he was dying. Asa Griffiths, he is Clyde's father, he is a poor evangelist. Esther Griffiths, she is the older sister of Clyde's. She ran away with an actor and is left deserted and pregnant. Oscar Hegled, he introduces Clyde for the worldly delights. Thomas Ratterer, he is a friendly Green Davidson bellhop who later helps Clyde to get a job at the Union League Club in Chicago. The meaning of bellhop is a hotel or a club employee who escorts guests to rooms, that is, who assists them with luggage. Hortense Briggs, she is a shop girl who gently persuades Clyde to buy her things. Wilred Spencer is a friend of Oscar Hagelin. Samuel Griffiths, Clyde's rich uncle, he gives a job in his shirt and collar factory in Lycurgus, New York. He offers an employment in his collar factory. There are many Griffiths family members, all that we can see when we do the summary. Next important character is Roberta Alden. She is the heroine of this novel and she represents the historical character Grace Brown. Similarly, the character of Clyde Griffins represents the character Chester Gillett. Both Alden and Clyde, they have an affair and Alden gets pregnant and she demands Clyde to marry her. This leads Clyde to plot murder and to let her drone. Let us see the summary of this novel. The novel begins in Kansas City on a hot summer evening. There were two adults and four children were singing songs, they were singing hymns and they were handing out religious pamphlets. The oldest boy who obviously does not like what he is doing 
but his parents were eagerly given him to salvation of lost souls which however gives them moral satisfaction they are asa griffiths the father of the family the oldest boy is clyde griffiths when he was young he seeks to break out of his dull little world that is why he hates to sing hymns and to hand out religious pamphlets in a small age he becomes an assistant in a drug store and then becomes a messenger to the hotel green davidson working in a hotel does not require any special skills and so clyde does a great job there and through the good tips that he receives from the hotel arrivers that is people who come and attend the restaurant to have their food through the money that he gets he contributes some budget to his family and also gets good clothes and save funds once his colleague from green davidson he takes clyde into a company where clyde had a fun experience there he meets a pretty saleswoman named hortense briggs who has a beautiful eyes and is much eager to talk to clyde the girl hortense briggs she is a kansas city girl who persuades clyde to buy her things she sells a fashionable jacket which is 115 and asks chide to buy it soon after his purchase clyde he takes a pleasure trip in the luxurious pack car to help the trip clyde takes a car without permission from the garage of one rich man whom clyde's father is working for clyde accompanies his friends named william sparser oscar hegland When they all returned back to Kansas City they began to ride their car in a high speed so that they can be early to their work as they drove the car in high speed they knocked down a girl this incident makes the driver and a girl to lie unconsciously in a broken car and all the rest in the car they run away including Clyde Griffiths The next day the newspaper arrives with this incident the girl has died and the policemen arrested Sparser Sparser reveals the names of other passengers that is other names of the members of his company fearing arrest Clyde and some of them who went along with Clyde they all leave Kansas City for 3 years Clyde he spends his time away from Kansas City he is living away from home under a false name there he performs small jobs for just few pennies but one day he happened to meet his friend Ratterer in Chicago Ratterer was also with him in the pack car that is 3 years before when the incident took place upon a conversation with Ratterer Ratterer arranges Clyde in a union club as a messenger. Now Clyde is quite happy with his new life, but once in the club appears Samuel Griffiths. Samuel Griffiths is the uncle of Clyde, who lives in the city of Lycurgus, New York. Samuel Griffiths he owns a factory of the production of collars. The meeting between Samuel Griffiths and Clyde happens to help Clyde. to move to like a guess his uncle has promised him a place in the factory as an employee samuel's son named gilbert he accepts clyde that is his cousin with no special joy gilbert makes sure not to provide any useful knowledge and skills to clyde so he puts him with sufficiently heavy and low paid work in the basement shop clyde he runs a room in a cheap boarding house in a hope that he will succeed later in life a month passes clyde regularly does whatever is instructed to him when his uncle griffith senior asks his son gilbert about the efficiency of clyde 
Gilbert fails to give good feedback about Clyde's work efficiency. According to Gilbert, Clyde has no education and is purposeless. However, hearing this feedback, Samuel Griffiths, he finds Clyde as a good person and is ready to give his nephew a chance to show himself. In contrast to the wishes of Gilbert, that is the son of Samuel, Clyde is invited into the house, their house, for a family dinner. There, he meets two cousins of the family named Bertine Cranston and Sondra Finchley. Both the ladies find Clyde as a well-mannered young man. Finally, by the insistence of his father, Gilbert gives Clyde less heavy jobs and gives more prestigious jobs. However, Gilbert wants him to keep up good appearance relationship with women workers. Clyde also promises to keep up with the requirements of his employers. And despite all this, there were some girls who tried to tie up a relationship with him. Meanwhile, the company receives an additional order from the callers, which requires an expansion of the state. Now to the factory, there comes a new employee named Roberta Alden. Alden looks so charm and beautiful. Where Clyde could not resist looking Alden's beauty, they start to date. When the company had strict rules, Roberta resisted to move with Clyde. Meanwhile, Clyde meets with Sandra Flinchay. And the meeting abruptly changes his life. Sandra Flinchay, being a rich heiress, a spokeswoman for the local aristocracy of money, she has a genuine interest towards Clyde. She invites him to a night of dancing. Under such advances, Roberta begins to fade in the eyes of Clyde. But later, Clyde and Roberta become close again. However, Sandra Flinche does not disappear out of his life. She introduces Clyde in her circle and tries to keep him entertained. When Roberta comes to know this, she experiences severe torments of jealousy. To top all of it, she becomes pregnant. When she reveals her pregnancy to child, he frantically tries to find out a way out of the situation. He also purchases drugs in order to abort the baby. But the desired result did not happen. Also, the doctor whom they visited refuses to do an abortion. The only way out was to get married. The idea of marriage does not satisfy Clyde. After all, he thinks that he should not give up his dreams of a brilliant future that he has instilled with a relationship with Sondra. Knowing this, Roberta is desperate. She is now getting ready to inform everything to Clyde's uncle. If Roberta informs Samuel, then the career of Clyde would end and also the affair of Sondra would end. So he promises Roberta to find some doctor or he promises that he will marry her. But there was an incident in the newspaper. It's an article that tells about a tragedy at Pass Lake where a man and a woman took a boat. But the next day the boat was found upside down and later the girl's body was found. But the man did not show up. Now this story impresses Clyde. Especially since he received a letter from Roberta who had gone to her parents and she is not going to wait any longer and promises to return like her guest and tell the elder Griffiths, that is Samuel Griffiths. Clyde is shocked and he realizes that he has no time to spare and he has to take some decision. Clyde invites Roberta to make a trip to Big Burton. Then he promises to marry her. It seems that there is a terrible decision taken by Clyde, but he himself does not believe that 
he will find the strength to carry out his plan. Upon Roberta's arrival, Clyde and Roberta, they go to a boating on a deserted lake. Clyde's thoughtful look scares Roberta. She carefully sits beside him. On the boat, when she tries to touch him, he hits her and pushes so that she loses the balance and falls. Now the boat turns over and hits Roberta. She begs Clyde to help her, but he becomes inactive and he goes to the bank alone without Roberta. The next day, Roberta's body is found. The investigator Haight and prosecutor Masson, they vigorously take the case and they soon find out Clyde. Clyde initially during the investigation pretends to know nothing but for an experienced prosecutor it is not so difficult to find who is the real murderer. Now Clyde is arrested and his fate is decided at the court. Hearing this Samuel Griffiths is shocked. He also does not hire good lawyers. The trial in the court ends with the punishment of death penalty. Nobody helped Clyde to get away from this matter. Only his mother is trying to do something for him to save his life from death penalty. Clyde is transferred to Auburn prison which is called the house of death. His mother was desperate. She finds some money to continue to save her son's life. Nothing succeeded. Finally, he was electrocuted. The theme of this novel is the contradiction of American ambition. That is, it refers to the ambition of Clyde, who repeatedly had desire to rise up socially and financially in modern America. At the young age of Clyde's life, he was into poverty as a youth. He spends his early earnings for wealth and success. Hope this video helps. If you have query or inputs, Please write it down below. Thank you for listening to us.